so dedicated to him, so surrendered to Jesus. There's no other way. There's no other way to serve him. There's no other way to serve Christ. Hallelujah. It has to be a full commitment. It has to be, God, I've given you my all. That means we're committed to the Lord even above our own children, our own spouses, our own family, that we're committed to Him. Because really the only way to really parent your children and to be the spouse that you need to be it actually takes you to be fully committed to God and have Him number one in your life. That He has first place. Because everything else just doesn't seem to work right. And you're always going to be racking your brain trying to figure out, how do I get this right? How do I get through to my kids? How do I get through to my spouse? How do I get through? How do I get through? You can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it in your own mind. I mean, when you talk about the relationship with, with the church and Christ and the church, Paul was likening it like a, a, like a husband with a wife. This is a mystery. Thank you that he's revealing this mystery unto us. Amen. Hallelujah. If you give it all to God, then you're going to get it right with him. You're going to get it right in every other area of your life. Because you won't be groping around in the darkness. You might be praying, how do I get through to my kids right now? How can I see them on fire and living for God? This is where it's all at. A couple Sundays ago, I picked up JJ and put him on my shoulders and said, we're to give this next generation our shoulders. We're to give this generation our shoulders. To boost them up into the things of God. And the plans and the purposes of God. If we don't pour into them the things of God, the word of God, then they're not going to be able to stand. Put education number one. And even above Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Yeah. And, and they wonder why when they go off to college they don't believe in God anymore. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. They wonder why. What, what happened? Where did they go wrong? We've got to sit around and, and we've got to speak to them the word of God. Yes. As it says in Deuteronomy. And we'll just turn there. This is the greatest thing here. I need to put wheels on. Kind of like a remote kind of thing. We're gonna we're gonna raise mighty we're raising a mighty generation of kids that will not buckle and fold and will not bow. We're raising up young men of, and women of God like uh, uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego would not bow to the things. Yeah, 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 yeah. They would not bow. Right. And there, is, there is, is a God of secular humanism that has, has been risen, especially in this nation. Trying to say, well, that there is no God. Or, and, and it's all worship of self. And of man. We can't bow to that. It's all worship of how great man is and what they're able to accomplish. And it's all Satan's ploy. See, that's what he was all about. He was about lifting up himself. He says, I will lift my throne above God. He had a bunch of I wills. And that was the problem. He had an I will in there. It was all about himself. And we're going to raise up a generation that is selfless. We're raising up a generation that is also mighty in God and they know where their strength comes from and they have a strong faith in God and in Christ. But not only 
a strong faith in him, but in his mighty power and authority. But that means us parents, us adults need to get things together. Because we can't just speak it. We have to live it. We have to live it before our kids. We have to live it before them. What is done in moderation in the home will be done in excess through your kids. So we might as well go crazy in excess with the word and the spirit because then they'll take off even. They'll be even more undignified in the things of God. They'll be mighty in Him. They'll hunger, thirst, during chapter 6. They need your shoulders. They need you strong in the Lord. They need to see you in His presence. They need to see it and live it. But they also need to see you humble yourself before God. They also need to see you when you make a mistake and, and, and you look to them and say, you know what, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. What's wrong? Please forgive me. I did not give you the example that you need to see. It's never too late. I remember this testimony my brother gave me. We were believing God for my brother to come to the Lord. My mom really just locked in and prayed for him. But when he came back to the Lord, the Lord was really working on him and he was going through a lot of changes and just kinds of things, and, and they, you know, he raised his daughter, not really into the things of the Lord at all. I mean, she was, I think, almost in junior high school when he finally, finally just surrendered to God, and saw she knew it was just, you know, the world, just kind of things of the world. I mean, he was still moral, he was still good, you know, you know, he had a hidden upbringing in the things of God, he, I mean, he was saying, cut, you know, cut his his teeth on Kenneth Copeland teaching and everything like that, you know. Um, or should I say the word? Should I say? It's <laughs> just a faith word. Yeah, amen. God. But anyway, that's what we grew up, 24-7. The Bible was playing in our house. That's how we grew up. And so, he came to her and said, you know what? I don't repair. I'm sorry to you. I did not give you the example. I'm sorry that I didn't teach you the things of God. And, he, and, and from that point, he had to just live it before her. He really couldn't because he didn't live it before before. He had to just simply live it before her from that time forward. And she's, there's a very close relationship. She's married now. And they're going to church. I mean, I don't see them just totally get by the revival fire of the Holy Ghost. You know, but, but I mean, they, they acknowledge God. She's serving the Lord yeah. in that realm. And I believe that it's not going to stop there. God's just going to just say, Amen. Amen. my whole family's going to be set ablaze and on fire right now. Amen. 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 But I'm just saying that, 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 that there had to be that repentance. And some of us in this room had that in your life. You didn't get to live that example. But we're to, to it's never too late. Even if they've grown up and moved out of the house, live before them that example. Live before them that example. Follow the Holy Ghost about your children. Ask what you need to do. Even if they've moved away, then what can I do to see to live that example before? What can I do? What can I say? How do you want me to speak into their lives? How do you want me to show them? Because this generation of your kids need us. They need us. Listen, this church is so blessed. We're packed full of children. We got so many kids. I, the kids really outnumber us. It doesn't look like it right now, but if I brought them all up here, you'd go, oh my gosh, and there's a few more, I think, in the back back there. It's 
pack back there. Yeah, or some of us have all of our kids. Yeah, so I mean, it's like we got so many kids. We're blessed. Amen. Amen. That is a blessing. Amen. That's a heritage from God that you've received. Do not take light of what you've been given. You've, I mean, you've got a responsibility now. Amen. Like I said earlier, don't beat yourself up now. Don't beat yourself up now. You're here. You've surrendered your heart to the Lord. You're right. giving him everything. Saying, God, here I am so that you can do it right. 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 So that you can do it right. Amen. Amen. Join me chapter 6 and verse 7. The Lord... Well, I was in 7, 7, 6, 7. And thou shalt teach them, who are the kids... Diligently unto the children, or excuse me, the word, the, 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 the laws, the word. Teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sit, sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou rise up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon your hand, and thou shalt be on the frontlets between your eyes, and thou shalt write them. Upon the posts of thy house and on the gates. So we're to teach them to our children. Amen. The words of God, the words of Jesus. We're to talk of them when we sit down and when we walk. Or in this, in, 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 when we drive. Yeah, absolutely. The conversations. With the kids as we drive. Hannah, yeah. Pastor Hannah has conversations with the kids. And Jane Skyler's like. <laughs> <laughs> with the kids, just teaching them the word that they may know and, 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 and going into it in their hearts. Yes. I mean, I was talking to Zeke yesterday, wasn't it? Going into his heart. About the, the, how are we to act? How are we to be when situations don't necessarily go the way we want them to go? And to remember that the people that you're around, you're to be a light to them. Amen? Amen. Amen. So continually teaching them and raising them up to know God. Not just to know about Him, but to know Him experientially. To have an encounter with Him. They can have an encounter with God in their living room. You can have an encounter with God in, 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 in service and bring them up and use There's a lot of time, a lot of services. There was a season I was bringing the kids up every single Sunday and just laying hands on them. Just yes. fill them up, Lord. Mm -hmm. Touch them with your fire. They get baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and, and speaking in tongues and experiencing a touch of God, weeping in the presence of the Lord. Let them experience the anointing. This is something that they shouldn't be afraid of. The only reason why when people come through these doors and, and come into a service like it was here with everybody shouting and, and all the craziness that was going on, which is not crazy, it's order of the Holy Ghost, divine order, amen? amen. And, and, and look around. The only reason why they look around and go, what is this? This is not church. Yes, it's church. It's actually meant to be this way. Right. It's meant to have an impact. It's just all the religion. They, they, they pushed all this stuff out, the move of the spirit, the yeah. power of God out. They, and so they went to some religious dead church. And so when they come in here, they're scared. They don't know. They think, what is this? They were never taught the word. They never taught it. They never experienced the power of the word at me and work in them. Because you got to experience it. If you just got head knowledge, if we just taught them a bunch of head knowledge and they don't experience it, then there's not going to be the strength to stand when, when the trials and those things come. We want our children to be able to stand, as I said earlier, like Daniel, and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Even when it wasn't the popular one. It was the, they were the only three that kept staying. Think about it. You're by yourself. Well, in this case, it was the three of them. They did not bow. Kids, listen to me. Do not bow. Do not bow to the world. 
and its enticements. Stand in faith upon the word of God. Stand in faith in Jesus Christ. Do not bow even if you're the only one that stands up in school for righteousness and holiness. Yeah. Even if you're the only one yeah. that's not being promiscuous yes. that means doing things that you yeah. shouldn't be doing yeah. with your body. Yeah. Or giving over to drugs or alcohol. Or not. You say no! Yeah. Even if it's only you that stands. Yes. Yes. So we're raising up a generation that will be bold in God, that will be strong. I love the example that my son, son gives. I mean, he'll wear that, that shirt that says, Jesus, huge, to football. Come on. Amen. He don't care. The only hope for America is another great awakening shirt. I love it. And we were just dropping them off, and I just noticed that on the shirt. Like, dude, I love my son. He's so bold. He's so bold. Amen. Just, just do it. They won't care because their confidence is not in whether they look or anything. It's in. It's all in Christ. It's 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 in them. And because of that, it just emanates through. And it's, there's that confidence. As a matter of fact. Kids, the people will want to follow exactly. because they see you're so yes. confident and you're so bold, and they're just like, "Man, they got something I don't have. They, they have a security that I don't have. There's a boldness. There's not a fear. There's not a fear. No, no. You may hit, you'll face persecution because what Satan that wants to do is he wants to get you to back off. Understand this, kids. You're gonna face what they call persecution. People will say. I hate you. Yeah. They may even threaten you. They may do horrible things to you. But I want you to understand this. That it's all the tactic of the enemy to get you to bow. Yeah. To back down. Right. But you will not bow. Right. But you'll right. stand in Christ. You'll stand in Him. Yeah. Yeah. But how are you going to be strong? And I've spoke, I speak this even to the adults a lot of times. It says... Submit to God, resist the devil, and then he shall flee from you. So this is how you can stand strong in the face of persecution, in the face of the enemy, in the face of those that would hate you because you believe in Jesus and you're living a life of holiness and righteousness. Is that you've submitted to God. That means that you've given your heart fully over to the Lord. That means you allow no part of the things of the world in. You're not partaking of the things of the world and then partaking of the things of God. Because if you do that, then you're not going to have the strength to stand. You won't have that strength. You won't have that confidence. There won't be that confidence in the Lord that you need. Now, if you're living holy before God and doing what is right, and how you can find out what is right and how to live, is right here. Come on. And then you come to church so that you can go and learn yes. from the Word yes. at a level that you're going to be able to understand. Right. Right. And that the Spirit of God, now listen, if you don't understand everything in this, it's okay, just ask the Holy Ghost. Yes. Say, Holy Spirit, help me to understand this. Yes. I want to get this. Yes. I know adults are going, hey man, yeah, that's good, I'll take that. <laughs> Because you can only gain, gain this by revelation and knowledge. There's no other way to gain this but by Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. And He reveals it to you. And it becomes real to you. in faith. So we sit down and we talk about the Word on a continual basis in our home. My wife gets more opportunities than I do. Because she homeschools the kids. And, and she's she driving around football, all the different things, and and uh, I hear her try to get off, you know, so I can be with and try, help with all that and driving them around. But but uh, speaking to them all the time about the things of God, your word of God, and attitudes, and how they act, 
if we're training them. They're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. Yeah. Don't judge us as parents because of what our kids do. Now, you might be able to judge us because if we do nothing. Mm-hmm. But we teach, we train. That's right. Kids get out of line. <laughs> they test their boundaries. Yeah. You know? It happens. But we correct them in love. We bring the correction in love. And as as parents, we want to learn to not allow ourselves to become frustrated with them when we're correcting them. Because what happens is just like, when, as it says in Ephesians 1 through 4, it talks about the fathers not provoking your children to wrath. Always honor in a way to where it just, uh, they, they finally just, they just, they'll, they, they'll take it so long and then it just pushes them away and they break and, you know, I've heard so many testimonies about pastors and with their kids and, and they were on them so much and, and it was just so full of religion. It was, they didn't get down to the heart and have those heart talks. And, 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 and instead of, instead of challenging them to live the life, Instead of giving them that challenging and setting them out before that, it, it was just more of this rebuke, you're not doing it. You're know, just pound, 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 pound. Right. And there's that time you've got to bring that rod. You've got to yes. bring that correction. You need to do it. But then there's that time that you've got to, you've got to teach them. You have to raise them up. You know, all that, to be honest with you, the rod should be done at a younger age. Yes. And, and, and you get it in there. And then as they get older and they begin to understand, then there's that more of that heart training. Yes. And you're really talking to them. Right. Right. It is even the point to where we barely have to bring them up. It's, it's just now it's talking right. it through yeah. and working it out. Yes. Amen? Yeah. And teaching them to, to, to love the things of God. Teaching them yeah. to, to even receive correction. Right. Amen? Amen. So how many of us wish our parents taught us how to receive correction? Because that's much more easier to receive it when we get it from our Heavenly Father or from our Word of God. Amen. It's all about training our kids and raising them up. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Because we're looking to, to see our kids be ministers of the gospel. Yep. Now, they can do whatever the Lord tells them to do. I want them to do what the God tells them to do. Some it could be business. Others could be other realms in life. But ultimately, they're still going to be ministers of the gospel. You know, just because we work in, 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 in the world somewhere doing some kind of secular job, doesn't mean that now we don't have to be ministers of the word anymore. We're still ministers of the gospel. We're ministers of reconciliation. Every single one of us who are bought by the blood of Jesus. Amen. But we're raising our boys up and we want to give them everything that they need. Every tool that they need. And I'm talking in the word of God. Out of the word. And the spirit of God. Hearing the voice of God. See, they won't be trying to figure out what to do in life when they get ready to fly the coop. They will know because they found out from God. They've gotten on their faces before the Lord. They've gotten on their faces before God. Well, how do they see to get on their face? They've got to see the mom and dad get on their faces. Seeking directions. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way that train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train them up. Teach them the word. Day in and day out. Speak of it often. Find those opportunities. They will arise. They will arise. As I was saying later, I was I picked up my son from practice. You know, and, and, and it's high pressure 
uh, there, when you're fighting for position and everything like that, it's just kind of the way of the world. I says, I want you to just have fun, but I want you to understand, you know, that those people that, you know, that you're around, that, that they're all, some, some are saved, but it's not all of them are saved. They're on their way to hell. They don't have the life of Christ. And they need to know that life, and you've got to let your light shine. Don't lose focus and keep looking for that position or fight for that position. Yeah, you're, you can still do it. God wants to raise you. He will raise you up when you humble yourself. Amen. And so it's like that fine balance of how do you shine. We're teaching our kids how to shine in the world and be successful, but yet still remain humble and still be able to shine the light and the love of Jesus and remember what is the main thing. That God is the main thing. That Jesus is number one. And then that through, that through our lives, we're to manifest the life of Christ. Sometimes the greatest, sometimes the greatest uh, uh, example it, that you will leave before others is when something doesn't go the way you want it to go. And you still walked with the character of Christ. Yes. Yeah. You gotta go the lower road. Teach your children to go and take that lower road. And and have our hearts remain humble. So train them up in the way that they should go. So that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Be keen, parents, be keen to the Holy Spirit. Be listening. Let's not get so too busy. Fast, fast, peace, everything. Run, 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 run. Like that's our lives right now. Yeah. It is so our life. I mean, we had two scrimmages. One had to get his gear. I mean, all about the same time. Plus, we had a wedding we were going to. And then, I have to get all fruit and vegetables and all the different stuff for this. I know, I'm just talking about you right now. I hope you guys, it doesn't yeah. uh, because it Because you got to learn, we got to learn how to do this in every area of our life. Yield to the Spirit of God. I could have picked him up, asked him how things went, all that stuff, and then never said anything. But we talked through it and through what his word says. Amen. Yeah. We got heart to heart. Jesus must not be number one in our very midst. Right. Yeah. You were not the running around. Yeah. Doing all that we do. Psalms 127. I'm taking take time to teach this because our, this generation, again, needs to be strong and it takes a family. It takes the family, it takes the parents, it takes, and I know with this generation, a lot of times we get stuck with just the parent. But you can do it, and God will make you to be well able to do so, and He'll give you the strength to do it, to teach your children, to raise them up. You're not alone. The single parents that we have here, you're not alone. Come on, yes. You have your Heavenly Father. Yes. He'll be a father to your children. I want you to understand that. And don't be afraid. But just put your trust in God and He'll give you the words to speak. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. 
but we also have the church, this church. that you can gain help from and strength from. Call us yes. so that we can, you know, minister and bring the word of the Lord and give you that what you need. Because I understand the toughness of it. Don't let the enemy tell you otherwise and try to beat you down and tell you you're failing. No, you're doing awesome. Amen. You're doing awesome. Yes. You're doing awesome. You can yeah. do it. You're well able. Yeah. Well able. Yes. Well able. Psalms 127, and I'll just start with verse 3. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. They shall speak with the, with the enemies in the gate. So children are a heritage. The fruit of the womb is his reward. They are a great reward for us. And as arrows are in the hand of a mighty warrior, so are the children of the youth. So, I like to look at this, that, that an arrow, we straighten them and we're taking out all the little things that would cause the arrow to go off and not hit its target. We're just hewing that shaft and just getting it smooth, that, that nothing will cause it to go this way, getting the feathers all set in there. Just right so that it flies true and hits the mark. Yeah. We're raising our children to hit the mark for God. That's right. We're raising a generation that will carry and run with the glory of God. That will go forth with the word of God in their mouth and will speak it with power and will speak it with authority. This is what we're doing. And this is what I want you to understand. And I don't want you to not take it lightly, the time that you have with your kids. Yeah. But pour into them. Pour into them the word of God. Pour into the prophesy over them. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. yield to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Spend time in prayer over your children. Yeah. You're hewing them. You're strengthening them. You're, 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 you're going to have them hit that mark. Pray over them. Yeah. Teach them to love God. Teach them to love the presence of God. Don't blow them off. Take time. Take time. And love them. Love them. Love them. Go into prayer about them. Each one that you have. And ask the Lord about them. I woke up, or I should say, I had a dream. Just before I woke up. And I, and I was preaching. I mean, I was just preaching away. And all of a sudden, JJ's right behind me in this dream. And he had a mic too. He had a mic too. And it was funny because it was like, I was speaking, I was talking in English. I was talking in the language that I understand English. <laughs> and he was too, though. But it was like this interpretation. He was interpreting but he was just speaking the same thing that I was speaking. Yeah. I was just decreeing the word of God, and he would decree it. And then so I caught on. He was, he was saying what I was saying, so I would pause and let him speak. Come on. And then I would speak, and then I would pause and let him speak. Yeah. <laughs> and 
And there'll be times that I'll be quiet and I'll hear the kids speak and they'll start to be saying the same things that I've said. Right. Like when I'm talking about the Word of God, they'll say the same things that I'll minister out of by the Spirit, where God puts in the heart. You know, they're, ministering. they're saying the same things. And you gotta understand that really they're just they're they're spirits and their souls in smaller bodies. Yes. Obviously my my son here has gotten bigger <laughs> and taller than me. But man, grab a hold of them. Hug on them. Give them a kiss. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them that they're special. Tell them that they're number one. Tell them that, that they're your favoriteest. That's what my wife does. You're my favorite. <laughs> what about me? You're my favorite, too. You're all my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> because they gotta hit the mark. They gotta be confident. Not in their own ability, but in Christ's ability. Teach them who they are in Christ or who Christ is in them. Let them know that they they're a new man, who their new man is. That they have a new nature on the inside. That they're, allowed, they're to allow the nature of God to come forth out of us. We talk a lot. When you hear those little attitudes, it says, we talk to them a lot about that. Say, that's not the nature of God. That's not the way we're to be acting. Go to the Word of God. Through the Spirit. <laughs> because they're going to have the strength to stand and fight the good fight of faith. I don't want to see one of these kids lost to the darkness. I don't want to see not one of these children that are in this church lost in the storms of life. When they fly the coop, or when they spread their wings and begin to fly and carry out what God has. I don't want to see one lost. Not one. Lord, I pray that you seal each and every child here in this place. That they will fulfill the plan and the purpose of God for their lives. Yeah. That you set them on the paths of righteousness. Yes, bind their feet to the path of righteousness. And they will not follow to the left nor the right. But they will follow the way of righteousness. They will follow the way that is narrow. They will follow the way that may, it is not popular in this world. But they will follow Christ. They will follow righteousness and holiness. They will live after God with their whole hearts. In Jesus' name, fill them with wisdom and understanding of who God is on the inside. Fill them with wisdom and understanding of who Christ is. So that they may, may be mighty men and women of God. And they will not love the things of the earth. They will not love the things of the world. But Father, I thank you the things of the world go strangely yes. dim to them. And the Lord, their eyes are set upon you. Their eyes are set upon you. Locked like flint. Immovable. Unshakable. They will serve you, God, with all, your, all their hearts. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. So they're going to hit the mark. They're going to hit the mark. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor 
thy father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Kids, listen to me. Yeah. Honor your father. Yes. Honor your mother. Yes. Honor them, for this is the first commandment with a promise. The first commandment with a promise, and that it may be well with thee, and that thou may live long on the earth. So it's going to be well with you when you obey your parents. Listen, it doesn't go well when you don't obey. It doesn't go well. And I'm not just talking about the consequences from your own parents. I'm talking consequences from Heavenly Father. Father God who made you. So obey your parents. When they speak to do something, you do it. They tell you to clean your room, you clean it. They tell you it's time to sit down and at the dinner table, you sit down at the dinner, dinner table. It's not do what I want time. Because we have to teach you and train you to become selfless. And be and have your mind set on what Christ wants, what God wants, not what you want. That's why we obey our parents. So that when we grow up, we don't just go leave and do whatever we want to do. But we do, we surrender our hearts, our will, our emotions, everything to God. Because He knows what's best. that it may be well with thee, and that thou may live long on the earth. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. So we're to bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. So it's child training is the nurture. Education, discipline, correction. Nurture or nature here. So the nature of God. <clears throat> and then admonition would be warning, reproof. Read through Proverbs. It's all about warning and reproof. It's all about yeah. gaining wisdom. You're teaching your kids to, to get a hold of wisdom. Train them up in wisdom. You're training them up for battle. Right, right. You're giving them the weapons to fight so that they can fight, as I said, the good fight of faith. Amen. You're raising them up as mighty men and women of God. I'm going to say this. Our kids do not have to go through teenage rebellion. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a complete lie from the pit of hell. Just because maybe you did doesn't mean they have to. Just because we hear that that seems what always seems to happen to kids raised in church. They go become teenagers. They don't really want the things of God. They, they love the world. No. No. We can teach them to love God. They do not have to rebel. They don't have to. We have to show them that. That we do not rebel to the things of God in our own life and our own life. So teach them with all love. And in Colossians 3, 20 through 21, it says the same thing. So Paul nails it twice. It's important. It's important. Raising our kids up. Do you have anything to, to add to this? I know you always got good stuff. I was just teaching. I know it's just it's a for somebody, it's a reminder. It's just I'm wanting you to see the importance of this. This is holy. This is powerful. I want you to go home and start putting this into to operation into practice. They're even taking it up to another level. In Christ. 
Amen. A few years ago, I just found myself really struggling, you know, with my kids and just feeling overwhelmed and, and, and frustrated that as much as I love them with my whole heart, felt stressed out, felt like I was just kicking and screaming and, you know, nothing was going my way. And I just had to stop myself and say, how can I be in the front row at church? Sailor, sit up. Extroverted, and I have a, the 
man and the mantle and the coat that my father gave me is that I'm able to love at a really large capacity. <coughs> I'm just able to really love people. You know, I just it's a mantle, it's a coat. I just received it and I've just learned to just be who God created me to be. So I have a lot of love for even a lot of other children. But what my children hear at the dinner table is you are my favorite. You are my very favorite children. There's no children that I love more than you. You guys are mine. God gave you to us. You're my gift from heaven. You're my very favorite people in the whole wide world. Why? Because otherwise they're going to see their mom and we're all reaching out to everybody else, giving out to everybody else. And it's like, well, where's my bread? Who am I? Do I belong in this world? All I see is my mom giving out, giving out. And I've heard pastor's kids over and over and over again tell me, you know, my, my parents spent so much time giving out to the ministry, and I was just chopped liver. And so we put an end to that in our home. That doesn't happen. We take them on vacations. We'll go in debt to take our family on vacation. We don't care, because it's important. <laughs> go jet skiing. Go hiking. Go do fun things. It's an important investment. It's a very important investment. Now, when my kids were really, really little, and we had the midweek services, it was really hard for, for me, personally, to be in the service because they were really little and we didn't have any childcare. And I know how some of you moms feel because I felt like I was coming to church, but then I was stuck in the back room. And so there was a season that we just mutually decided that it was okay that I stay home. But I made a commitment in my heart to the Lord that we would still have church. And we didn't have any periscope or anything like that. But... You can either bring your kids to church, which is fine. But listen, it's okay. If, if it's really difficult for you on a Wednesday night or whatever, have church at home. We would, I would create an environment in my home, and we would put on the worship music, and we would talk about the word, and have great times at home. So we don't have to just limit church to at church. Have church at home. Have, let's have church in our home. And lots of love and lots of discipline. So we just pour out, pour, pour, pour the love, pour the love, pour the love, and pour, 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 pour the discipline. And you can pour them both. Yes. You can just keep on pouring yes. both of those, and it's just the perfect balance. Um, but, you know, children are like tomato plants. You know, and tomato plants, they grow, they grow, they grow, and we're like that, that, uh, you know, that, the wire and the gate that, that you put around. And, and we give our kids that next level. We, we help them by giving them that next, you know, they're, that, they're, that they can branch up and branch onto. And we're stable and we're strong for them. And we also tell them when we're sorry. You know, our kids are going to know us. Yeah. Front, back, and center. They know. They know, they know, they know. And we don't have to have any facades. That's right. You know, yeah. I mean, I just tell my kids, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on that. That's an area in my life, guys, that I'm working on. And uh, thank you for loving me. <laughs> thank you for having patience with me, you know. Right. And Pastor Bob, I, I was really blessed on the Friday morning that we were there. And, and Pastor Jason ministered. And, and then Pastor Bob got up of all people. He, he, he can't talk. He battled throat cancer. And so Pastor Debbie took over the church. Otherwise, they would be really co-pastoring. But his voice is very, very, very hoarse. And, and, you know, it's... And when he got up and he said, I'll never, for, I'll always treasure these words in my heart. He said, I see a family in front of us that treat their children as gifts and not possessions. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just so blessed. Yeah. I thought, what, what a great honor that somebody would say that about us. And I, I, val I valued those words, and I treasured those in my heart. And I didn't even know that we were doing that. I didn't do it on purpose. It's just, they are our gifts. They're not just our possessions, you know, and we have them for such a short time. And, and we talk about, you know, Zeke, we've got four more years. And I tell them, have fun. Enjoy these last words. Of course, the kids can stay in our house later. It's not like they're 18 we're going to give them the boot. They can go. It's not like that. You know? But I know that when I was 18, I was gone. I never <laughs> returned. Um, but yeah, just, you know, love on your kids. This is a family church. It's a family church. Listen, we're not bothered. We're not bothered by 
by your children. Your children don't bother us at all. Your children don't bother us. We love them. We think they're absolute cute adorableness. We love everything about your children. They're awesome. We value your kids.
We might preach up because we have given ourselves to the accountability of the Holy Ghost. And we're just going to say what he tells us to say. He woke up this morning, he said that the Holy Ghost is telling me to teach on raising children. I said, yes sir, awesome, praise the Lord. But you know, that you know, that you know, that you've got pastors that love you. And you know what? You're our friends. It's okay. We're not going to be on another level. Now there's a mantle. You know what I'm saying? There's a mantle. There's a mantle that leadership in the body carry. There's a mantle. It's there. It's real. It's very real. There's a real authority that we have that we walk in. But we love you, and we're committed to loving you to the end. And I know 